Hey everybody! First off, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support that you guys have shown on the last video. It really means a lot to see all those nice comments and really is just a motivational booster going forward. So please keep up the support. It really helps the channel and it helps me deliver better content to you guys. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. So for this week's lesson, I asked you guys what you wanted to see next. And the winner from our poll that I put up is Grant Green's Guide to the Blues. So in this video, we'll be covering Grant's amazing solo over Charlie Parker's tune, Cool Blues, and talk about the different ways that he approaches playing the blues. Let's check it out right now. <laughs> This is such an amazing study of the blues. He really throws everything into this, including bebop and the blues. So the first section, or the first way that Grant tackles this, is by just playing the blues. This means that he's just playing the sound of the blues, not really hitting quote unquote the changes. He does this in a couple ways. The first one being a common blues tactic called either a walk up or a walk down. He uses it right at the start of his solo. <laughs> This is a walk down. In this case, Grant is walking down from the flat seven of our chord to the fifth of our chord and using B flat as a pedal point in order to do that. Another common place to do a walk down is from the fifth to the third. Now we can also do a walk up. Instead of going down, all we have to do is just walk up to whatever tone we're going for. Here's an example of Grant using a walk up in his solo. The second way Grant plays the blues sound is by simply just playing the blues scale. You can hear him do this on the last chorus. So easy and so simple. Notice how he hits the note G, our sixth, and the note D flat, our flat third a lot. These are good tones to aim for when using the blues scale. Here's an example. Also notice over the four chord of our blues, he goes towards the E flat now. It's a good idea when playing the four chord over a blues to aim more towards that E flat in our scale rather than trying to hit the E flat over the one chord of our blues. Here are a couple examples of lines combining all the different blues concepts we learned from Grant in this lesson. So the next approach Grant takes to play over the blues is by using 5-1 licks, or in other words, playing the changes. These are lines that help keep our solo moving forward. For example, here's a great 5-1 lick that Grant plays on his second chorus. What 
what he is doing is making our one chord, our B flat seven, into an alter dominant chord. This just means that we take the ninth or the fifth of our chord and either sharp or flat it. When you do this, it makes it into an alter dominant sound, which makes more tension, which in turn makes it want to pull even harder to the dominant's one chord. In this case, our one chord would be E flat seven, since if we were in the key of E flat, the five chord would be B flat seven, which is the starting chord of our blues, since we're playing a B flat blues, and B flat seven would then want to go to E flat. Now here are all the spots in a blues where you can stick a five one progression in. So now that you know all the spots where there's a five to one progression that could be played, you just have to take all the five one licks that we learned from Grant Solo and just plug and chug them into those spots. Here are some more examples of Grant playing five to one. The last way Grant approaches playing the blues is by playing tonic dominant lines. These are lines that are played over a dominant chord, but unlike an alter dominant line, they don't pull to the one chord, they just stay in the five chord sound. This is a common thing to do when playing in the style of bebop. And a good example of where you can apply this is the B section of a rhythm changes. Here's an example of this kind of sound from Grant solo. This is an amazing bebop pattern that is played by almost everybody. You can hear Grant use this multiple times in his solo, and he even moves it to other chords. Think of this line as a way to connect ideas together. You could just play it down multiple octaves. Or you can use it as a way to lead into a blues idea. Here are some other examples of tonic dominant lines from Grant Solo. So just to recap, we have three different ways that Grant has shown us how to approach playing the blues. One being just to play the sound of the blues by playing walk-ups or walk-downs, or by playing the blues scale. The second way is just to play five to one licks. So once you know all the spots in the blues where you can add five to one, then try to find some language that you can put over those places. And the third way is just to play tonic dominant language. So now I'm gonna play a couple choruses on the blues using what we took from this lesson and applying it into a short etude. I hope you guys have enjoyed this solo about Grant Green's Guide to the Blues. If you want more information on the blues, make sure to check out my previous video that I did that breaks down even more ways to approach playing over this great chord progression. Remember, to learn this solo by ear first and use the PDF as a guide, don't learn it from the PDF. Then take Grant's ideas and write your own solos with them, just like I did in this video. The more that you do this, the more that you transcribe, steal people's lines, write out solos, the easier it's gonna be to apply them to your improvisation. If you like the kind of content that I'm making, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more content in the future. Also, I have a couple spots open in my private studio. Make sure to send me an email and we can sign you up for a time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always keep swinging.